Speaking with John Kiley last night, and, and, and one of the things he said, Sean, is that the, the difference between McNeville in January and going back to McNeville this time of the year. Uh, what, what's your take on it? Oh, Rasp, it's, um, <clears throat> it's no comparison. Uh, like the weather, like all other teams and intercounty teams, going back to at the moment, the weather is, is, is really pleasing to go back when, when it's nice conditions and stuff. Of course, in Raquel, when when the ground is soft and it's windy and rainy, it's, it's not that exciting to go back on a Tuesday evening. So um, to get the opportunity now to go back on a Tuesday when it's sunny um, is really, really exciting. So really enjoying it at the moment, Raph. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, split season as well, Sean, with, uh, you know, uh, inter-county out of the way and then a complete shift of focus to club. Yeah. Uh, something that you'd, uh, uh, that you'd agree with and something that you think is, is beneficial to club and co- inter-county players? I think so, Raph. Yeah, in that... When you're in the intercounty setup, all your focus on that, you can give everything you have towards the intercounty. And then when that finishes up, all your attention then towards, towards your club, because of course you're going to be expected to give a lot to your club. So at least you're given the opportunity to give all your attention in a long period of time to that club. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a great way and I hope it, it, it is, it's the same in the next couple of years. I think it's really, really promising. Finally, for me, Sean, Tipperary at the weekend. Uh, always there, thereabouts, in a team that have plenty of young uh, blood coming into the into the panel. No more than yourselves uh, with the uh, additions that John Kiley mentioned last night. Uh, promises to be a, a tough encounter. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, like other teams, we have a, only a small bit done over the last couple of weeks, um, and very little game time done. Only maybe a couple of games in between uh, between ourselves. So the first game, of course, is going to be. Uh, a test, uh, especially with the mileage on the clock, just get miles into the leg and stuff. So, um, yeah, a tip are always going to be good, Raf. Uh, they're a hurling county and they have young lads coming through, same as ourselves. So, look, we can only wait and see, and we'll be looking to get a performance out of ourselves rather than focusing on, on tip. Like, what does it feel? The idea, like, do you think we'll see crowds um, this summer at any stage? And what will that moment be like, I guess, you know, when you'll actually be able to run out to <laughs> a, a live audience? Yeah, it's interesting to put a big smile on my face there, Philip. Um, I'd love to see it like everyone else. I'd love to see a full or even a half capacity turlis at a Gaelic Crowns or Crow Park. Can I see it happening? I don't know. I think it's unlikely over the next couple of months, maybe by... August, July, uh, you might see some crowds, but like uh, it, it'll be a strange one now in July if you're playing a championship game on a Sunday and the weather is lovely, whether it be in Turles, when usually there might be 40,000 there. So, yeah, it, it seems like a long time ago, Philip, when there were big crowds like that, doesn't it? Um, but I, I, I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be the case. I think the novelty of it has certainly worn off. I would really love if there was crowds there. Um, but when it is the case, maybe 12 months' time, it'll be some incredible, uh, it'll be strange initially, but it'll be, it'll be amazing to, to even have see a Crow Park with 80,000 in it again. Well, that's like, I know it's hard to imagine even now, so, but yeah. how, how, how different was it? Because it's not to say even, um, I heard one of them last night kind of say, look, sport is nothing without fans, but like everybody ad- admired what you achieved, but how different was this? Um, and... and yeah, it was it was it was fine. Like it, the circumstances were, we just obviously had to d- deal with it, and we did. And players just rolled with it. Um, but in one sense, it was there a sort of a novelty in it in the first year? Maybe it was. And then the evenings, it was evening games. There was lights on, and probably wasn't too much different. But now, when the summer's on and the sum, the the weather been lovely, and there's no crowds there, it'll be nearly like an A versus B sort of game. Um, but it just it seems like a long, long time ago since there was crowds at a game. Like in 2019, when you think about it, the last game we played was really was a massive crowd in 80,000 in Crow Park. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to play in front of a crowd again. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't too... Di- I, we're well used to it now, Philip. Well used to it. Uh, makes no difference to us, really. And did you get any... <clears throat> Did you get any kind of, I know it was so different without the, the kind of cup and you had those moments or the couple of hours after the, the final yeah. whistle, but like, was there any highlight since at all? Like, did you get any private moments or like how different was it again to, to 2018 and the from the moment the whistle blew? Yeah, chalk and cheese. Like we didn't get the cup into the dressing room, obviously after the game, after the All-Ireland final. Um, we were lucky in one sense to get the three or four days to celebrate as a group 
um, after the game. And then obviously the, the lockdown pre-Christmas came and then that was it. But that was it then. Do you know, like you hardly even heard about or spoke about the Ireland final then three weeks later because you weren't meeting anyone on your family and they were sick of talking about it. So like in one sense, it was good because it doesn't even feel like you had won it. So like you're coming in this year now when you're kind of fresh, whereas if in 2018, there was four, three, four months of going to schools, going to clubs, going to um, different occasions with the cup or even just going as a, as, as a, as a guest. So, and that can be tiring as well. Do you know, that can take its toll on, on players when they're being pulled and dragged. So there was none of that this year. And in one sense, that was nice because there was evenings where you just got an opportunity to sit down and relax for the weekend or in an evening time. So it was nice. But I was lucky now over the last two weeks, one night I got the cups down to my house. So with a nice night nice here with the three or four cups with my family. So that was nice. That was a real highlight. And it was one really low key in comparison to 2018. So you really got to enjoy it. So that was a, a highlight over the last couple of months where you really just got to enjoy the moment with your family and those that are closest to you. So, um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was chalk and cheese in terms of celebrations in 2018 and 2020, but hopefully another one, Philip, to, <laughs> to celebrate. The Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Philip. Sean, uh, Vincent O'Toole here from the 42. Hi, um, just uh, looking at the Limerick full backline last year, I suppose you would have been used to coming up to the grades with Richie English and Mike Casey, and it was a very settled full backline. So kind of how big an adjustment was, was it for you kind of getting used to playing alongside new players last year? Yeah, I kind of just settled into it, really, Fintan, in that we were obviously dealt with the blow of losing the two lads to desperate injuries. But Dan settled in so well, in variance to Dan, you could tell him to do anything and he'll do it. He'll do it 110%. Barry fitted in very well as well. Very great distributor of the ball, really good on the ball as well and, and really settled into a defensive role. Um And it does take a bit of time, you know, and we really settled in well together. But then you can see it now. There's six or seven lads that you could say that could be starting on this full back line. And that probably gets the best out of myself, Dan, Mike, Richie as well. So, like, in years gone by, there mightn't have been as much competitiveness in that full back line. But now there's certainly six or seven lads that you could, uh, you could be playing there. So, um, but, yeah, there was. it's really great to see Richie coming back. He he was obviously on the All-Ireland panel, done, had a great recovery. Mike is probably a, a month or two short, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it's great to see that so, so much lads putting their hands up for that position. Um, the pressure on all of us. And in terms of then, um, Tom Condon retired in January mm. and like Richie McCarthy would retire at the end of 2019. Like, how important were those guys in terms of kind of when you younger kind of fullbacks first came onto the panel? I suppose you've now kind of taken charge of the situation. Yeah, uh, obviously, Richie Riccardi was a, a fan favourite and he was a, a, a real favourite player of mine when I was growing up as well. Often up in the up in the terraces singing his name and then getting an opportunity to come off and play with him. So he was a great lad around the dressing room. Um, Tom was obviously great as well. And uh, yeah, they did a lot of time and a lot of. A lot of their life given to Limerick GA, so it was great even for them to to get that bit of success when they finish up as well. But there's a lot of leaders in the group that'll be able to take the position that they have left. Um, and there's no doubt that that they'll they'll grab that with both hands. But um, yeah, look, it was it, it's sad to see obviously Tom go this year, but um, look, there's more to life in the GA as well. He'd begin to enjoy other things than than hurling as well. And just finally for me, um. Has the break allowed you a chance maybe to reflect on your own progress? I mean, you mm. would have done your cruise shit in 2016 and then kind of came out to the panel. But like since then, you've had three All Stars in a row, two All Ireland medals. Um, I don't know, did, did, have you got a, kind of got a chance to maybe reflect over the last couple of months? Yeah, not not really. It's not something that would would really um, build too much in my mind. I thought maybe I think Fintan, these things, especially the All Stars, are things you kind of look back at when you finish playing and say, "Geez, weren't they great times?" It's it's. Uh, you'd love to really enjoy the moment for what it is, especially all Ireland occasions when in 2018, you'd love to really go back and enjoy that moment a bit more. But the pressure and obviously the, the the want to win and fear of losing obviously takes from that enjoyment element. So to be able to enjoy it so much at that moment is quite difficult. I think when you look back in time in years to come, saying, Gene, that was fantastic. But at the moment when you really want to win um, and you put so much pressure on yourself, it's hard to enjoy uh, a lot of these things, but obviously the I, I've made a, a good recovery since the Crucius. Um, seems like a long time ago now, but hopefully uh, there'll be more success in the future.
Perfect. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Richard. Yeah. Sean, John Fogarty, Irish Examiner. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Sean, the, there's been a lot of debate over the the city city season months about you know Limerick Hurland's opportunity being monsters, Munster Rugby's difficulty being from a dual uh, town like yourself uh, of Bruff, obviously, which has a very proud uh, rugby di- tradition and a growing GA tradition. What are your thoughts on that? In which the, the dual. In, in the sense, in the sense that you know the Limerick GA has taken over a little bit from rugby. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I suppose like that would have never happened, really, John. If Limerick weren't successful over the last couple of years, I think a lot of attention would still be on, especially in the city, on rugby. Um, where where teams are successful, of course, younger people are going to be wanted to be involved in that, and I think. Um, Look, it's great for the team. It's great for Gaelic Games around Limerick. There's great structures in underage uh, academies in Limerick, both in county and at club level. And that has obviously has been as a success in 2018, you know. Um, but we wouldn't be talking about this if there was no success over the last couple of years, you know. So, um, look, Limerick is a great sport in county. There's still a lot of people looking to play rugby in the city and there's some big schools that are... Um, developing great players for, for, for Munster and stuff and, and soccer as well soccer is big in the city as well and obviously with the Treaty United starting up again but look where, where teams are successful and Gaelic Games and Limerick are successful in the hurling at the moment I think that a lot of kids look up to us at the moment and say Gina I want to be playing with them now and I want to be successful in the so, um, it's great for Gaelic Games of course I, I'm a big advocate of Gaelic Games so it's great for us at the moment but, um, yeah do you think the the two can coexist? Like Munster Rugby can come back to uh, to uh, you know to to achieve success while Limerick GA is is, is you know at the yeah. top table. I think so. Um, like I, I follow the rugby, enjoy watching the rugby, but I can't really have an opinion on how they can be successful in the future because I I don't know how they can. But I, I definitely can see them both, like both Gaelic games and rugby. Uh, succeed and, and, and being successful alongside each other in, in Limerick and, and in Munster can't see why it's just a matter of um, putting the structures in place um, there's plenty of people and kids out there wanting to play and, and are playing just to get the structures right both for hurling and football and rugby um, and you can see the success that that has brought for Limerick hurling over the last couple of years like that wasn't brought over the last few years, it could be 10 years in the making from we were under 14 so it does take time um, yeah. and, and, and it takes the right people involved in the right organisation and structure. So I'm sure if the rugby have that in place, they'll begin to reap rewards over the next couple of years. And the very final one, Sean, did, did, you, did you play rugby at underage for Bruff? I did when I was very young, John. I'm many really good now, but I played. <laughs> um, but I go over and watch my couple of buddies play. I, play, and I, I, I go over and watch a couple of games. I'd be quite interested. So, um, yeah, maybe when I retire, uh, John, I might turn to the rugby. Thanks, Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. On from RT. I'll, tr- I'll try again. You can hear me this time? Hi, on. Yeah, how are you going on? Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, Sean, John Kiley said he thinks that the, the new black card law is too complex. Do you have similar feelings or what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, it, it actually didn't come into my head um, up until I saw the interview, I think, or the article this morning. Um it might be worth having a discussion with a couple of defenders that we have at the moment just to see, I suppose, their approach around it and just to be cognizant of it and just to know the rules around it. I don't actually know anything about the, the, the black card rule. I don't know what happens, to be honest, or where where you're punished in the field. But from what I understand, is it's going to be quite hard to, 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 to manage from a referee's perspective in that, especially where, like... A lot of forwards at the, at the moment can actually play for a free and can be dropping the head. And, and players are nearly, in one sense, could be coached to win frees. Um, and that can be difficult as a defender to try avoid that too because you can be sucked into it uh, unintentionally. So um, it'll be a difficult one, but it's it's. I must actually bring it up soon on and just have a discussion around it. Thanks for reminding me. But I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it'll be... It'll be we're going to have to wait and see to see how it goes in the league. It'll certainly be a hot topic of conversation um, over the next couple of months. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know too much about it. You um, you were one of the players using the bamboo hurley last year, Sean. Are you, are you yeah. going to use it again this year? Will it be your main hurler? How do you find it? 
Yeah, I find it really good. Um, I think there's there's very little difference between the ash and the bamboo at the moment, and I do think it has a place um, in the GA in the next couple of years, especially. I know Grohl Hegarty is a big, uh, he, he uses it quite a lot. I've obviously using the ash at the moment, but I could probably use it over the next couple of weeks as well, the, the bamboo. Um, I think it's really good. And do you find you get longer distance on it, or is it almost the same? Or? Yeah, almost the same. Um, very like from a player's perspective, is it looks like a hurley. Um, it 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 feels like a hurley, and and, and essentially it, it performs like a hurley as well. So that's the main thing, you know. Oftentimes, when I suppose when the cool tech was there, and if you saw an intercounty hurler using plastic hurley, you'd be kind of you'd be looking at him twice. So considering it looks like a, a hurley, I think it's a big plus, and and again, it performs the same as an ash hurley. Last one for me. Then, Where, whereabouts did you do the swimming? Were you in the sea or? Yeah, I spent a bit of time back in Doonbeg. My girlfriend has a has a house back there, so spent three or four months back there. Um, spent a lot of time in the sea swimming, um, well away from Hurley and and Slither. So it was a nice break. I really enjoyed the three or four months, and really looking forward to feel the fresh freshness now going into training. I'm really looking forward to to getting the games as well. Good stuff. Thanks. How you doing? How's it going, Sean? It's Niall McIntyre here. Hi, Niall. How are you doing? Not too bad now. Um, you mentioned Sean that you weren't doing um too much. Maybe the few months after winning the All Ireland. So how did the how did the body hold up? I suppose getting getting back into training then the last two weeks. Yeah, as I said, I suppose the nature lads over the last couple of weeks would have began to gradually do their own bit, um, because they just wanted to to feel good and 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 do a bit of exercise anyway. But yeah, certainly the miles on the legs I felt over the last two weeks. There was tough two week sessions. Um, but even after two weeks, I feel like we've been training for the last month and a half. You know, we're really back into the swing of it again, back into the routine of doing your recovery after training, training hard for the hour and a half, two hours or whenever you're training. Um, but look, there's no replacement for games as well. And we're looking forward to getting the league underway and just to get miles on the, on the, in the legs as well. Just that 70 minutes, you know, um, you can do all the running and all the drills and stuff. It's just there's no real replication for games and it's I'm really looking forward to that starting with no injuries. I've seen a few um, different kind of physios and even county managers come out saying that the four week lead in wasn't enough like for players to prepare for a league. Like you said earlier that you thought it was sufficient. Like, do you think it's, do you think it is like lads are kind of raring to go anyway? Yeah, I do think so. I think so. Niall. I think the, the days of the four month preseason, um, it, it, I, I don't think it's it, it, there's a, a place for it anymore. I don't, it, there might be a place for it, okay. But I think to get fit, I think six weeks is plenty, plenty long enough. Um, if you apply yourself right, of course there's going to be exceptions where there's some lads prone to putting on a bit of weight and stuff over the couple of months. But again, you can tailor programs. There's S&C coach as well, experience to be able to tailor a, a fitness program for them or a diet program for them um, that will fit their needs, you know. But in the grand to fit the modern player i think six to f- four to six weeks is plenty um and yeah i i'm, I'm happy really with the, the the lead into the league cheers sean thanks Niall. Hi, hey, sean. Sean, here from punnett arena how's things hi Marissa, how are you doing not too bad now it's just following on from that again it's going to be a fairly grueling schedule um coming up you know the five games with just just one break in between and, and then heading straight into championship almost. Has has player management come up a lot in, in, in the past two weeks of prep? I suppose player management probably has been there for the last number of years, um, where a lot of teams are tracking players' loads and how they're feeling, um, both on and off the field. So I think that has probably been there for the last couple of years and obviously would be a lot more, a lot more attention would be on it now as games begin to... And the load, people, the increased load of the next couple of weeks. But that's where you're like, there's a panel of 45 players. There are 35, 38 players, I think. Like, they'll all be used over the next couple of weeks. You know, you're not like going to be exposed to five games. Those players will be used. And it's great. It's good to get those players used as well because it, 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 it improves the panel as well. And you'll be, you'll be calling on a lot of lads to, to play a part in the championship as well when it comes around. So it's important that they get good game time as well. But yeah, I think it, it must have has been around for the last couple of years, and I think a lot of attention it will be brought on player management and the load that players are being exposed to, just to prevent injuries. 
when you're going from a, a, you know a, a big break like like you've had into such a grueling schedule is is it almost intimidating in a way or is it is it something you embrace or is it you know yeah, is there really a bit of apprehension yeah really excited for us to be quite honest um look it's it's we're all here to play hurling play hurling games and now we're running into may june july when the weather's going to be nice dry hopefully like that's the best time of the year to be playing you know um you couldn't be not but excited to be playing different story if it's in early january or december when it's cold and miserable sometimes you might be saying genie I, i'm not looking forward to this now but look it's it, the weather's going to be really nice we're really privileged to be able to get out and play play games um and I'm just speaking for myself, and I suppose maybe on behalf of the, the Limerick Town, we can't wait to get out and start playing games. We've got a really good two weeks in, in, in preparation, just training hard. So um, really, I just can't, can't wait to get back playing. As Raf mentioned, there's a couple of new fellas in the panel, um, three of which haven't, haven't been there before. Has it been mm. strange to type of, try, try and integrate them in, like in the last two weeks? They've settled in really well. Yeah, some four top lads coming into us. Um, and it's a really great group and that's they'll be welcomed with open arms and if they if they work hard and apply themselves right they'll get on really really well and they'll be given plenty of opportunities um and look in a setup like that they're only going to come on as players you know um being exposed to that level of training um and if as if that if they're good players of course they're good players that they're going to be brought in but um as they begin to develop they'll add more to our panel and add more to our team as well but um yeah they're settling really well they train really hard and um, two big, two or four big young players as well. It's just so I don't know where they're reading them in Limerick, but the the underage structure obviously is 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 uh is reaping awards when like to, to see the strength of some of them. Cheers, Sean. Hi, right, uh, Sorry, folks. I'm just conscious of time there, so we might just take one last question if anyone has anything, and we, we, we'll let Sean head on. Hi, Sean. Colm Keys in the Irish Independent here. How are you? I'm good, Colm. How are you doing? Very good now. Uh, just just one question. Uh, you're going in as defending champions for the second time in three years. Uh, if there was one thing you would do differently than you did in 2019 as a team, what do you think that would be? Good question, Colin. Um, would I, what would I do differently? I suppose it's something I must reflect on. Um, I don't think I would do anything different, Colin. Um, I suppose just, again, just like we've always been doing, focus on ourselves, you know, um, I've always said that if we if if we perform to the level that we expect of ourselves and to the level that we can perform at, um, we'd be there or thereabouts of beating any team around. Um, of course, there's going to be a tag on our back at the moment uh, after coming off the back of that all Ireland success, similar to what Tip would have been like last year after coming off 2019. But look, we we can only focus on ourselves if we get our preparation right. Don't get complacent. Don't sit back in our laurels and admire what we'd done last year. I think we we we'll be in a good position, you know. It's just not not a matter of not getting complacent and not um, thinking we're going better and, and playing better than we actually are. Um, I suppose when you when things are all good and, and really going well, I suppose that's the important time to keep your eyes sharp because you can you can fall into a trap of thinking things are really going really really well when perhaps they mightn't be. So it's just a matter of having a sharp eye, not getting complacent, and just focusing ourselves, Colin. Basically, yeah. Uh, 